of the mass pike right along the framing head. All right, record. Uh, Hi, everybody. Are you recording? Yep. This one, this one will actually be there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get rid of it. To get rid of the news, there ain't nothing worth wa worth watching anyway, except freaking snowy weather and yeah. murders. Yeah, so I thought we'd do a little bit of a show today on our own personal experiences of the paranormal since, you know, for over the years. And we also, uh, an ongoing demonic case, we wanted to uh, find out if there was anybody in New Britain, Connecticut that could uh, actually <laughs> cleanse a home, right? Bless a home? Well, pretty much. We've been, oh God past five or six years in touch with this family up in New Britain, Connecticut that has some really uh, bizarre stuff going on. Uh, we've been there a couple of times and from my experiences and probably I would say yours too, it's really nothing out of the ordinary if you want to call anything paranormal in the ordinary. But uh, we know these people very well. They're, they're good friends of ours and there is shit that goes on there that just hits the fan from time to time i got an email from her or a facebook message from uh, the lady today and they had to leave their home last night uh things got so bad and I, i'm just getting her message now i actually i own a crappy android so i i don't get my messages mm -hmm. from I mean, time to time nobody should hey, have to live like that uh, no. uh, so that's yesterday's yeah, nobody should have to live like that, have no. to flee their home. No, so we are going back up, probably a couple, three weeks. But if there's anybody that watches this that's in New England, that's uh, capable of going there immediately, should they want clergyman immediate, immediate attention, you know, somebody that can do something. It's probably going to be three weeks before we get there, right? Right, right. If there's anybody that knows any clergyman in New Britain, Connecticut, that can help this family, just call us at... 774-473-1550 and give us information and we'll get the information to them yeah. so well you know i wouldn't go and say clergyman i mean every town has clergymen in it somebody that, that they know you're not going to get you know. a ordained priest or something like that to come out to your house and bless it and uh exercise a demon out of your out of your house or whatever i mean they just unless you're donating Mega bucks to that church, they really don't care. Mm -hmm. But somebody schooled in the, in the uh, what do you call it, in, in demonic activity or inhuman activity, or, or just really some damn good paranormal investigators. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, uh, we'd love to do it. We wish we could get in the car right now, but between, you know, yeah, between work, work and, and the next two weekends we got booked. We could always cancel the 30th if we had to, but we could, we do, we have to go up to Rockland and do a reveal on a case we on the did. 23rd next week. Right. But we couldn't the we 30th, can cancel yeah. that. You know, I want to get, I actually, I want to get up to, uh, Debbie's as soon as possible. Yeah. So, you know, they're, uh, you know, every case is important. But when you, when they're personal friends of yours, and have been for years, that it's it, it puts a little more into it, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's children involved. There's well, not teenagers involved, and they're just real nice people, you know. Yeah, when we were up there, she actually had told us that you guys we stayed the whole weekend, and she said you guys are gonna have nightmares, and we're like, what? What are you talking about? Because everybody that stays here has nightmares, and wouldn't you know it? We all had weird nightmares, and they're all kind of related. He I, didn't. He didn't, didn't have, have it, nightmares. but uh, yeah. I was the one that was actually performing the exorcism. Yeah, and while he was doing that, I was feeling all the good spirits. They were scared and upset. They thought they were having to leave, and well, that's not what we were doing. I had I had to explain to them, you don't have to go. This specific one has to go. Yeah. So. But, you know, just, and we were actually, the whole team was talking with the, with, the, we'll call her Debbie because that's her name, and that's still anonymous enough, but have been talking that sometime as soon as spring rolled around, we were going to go up anyway, just to hang out and, you know, have a weekend of hanging out with these people, because they're the nicest people in the world. Yeah, great people. Yeah. So... But like I say, it, and I'm not, I'm not turning this case over to anybody. I mean, it is five years ago when I first met them on Blogstar. 
you know, this was something that me and Radio Rod and right. and Captain Chris and a few others had had taken under our belts, and we're, we're trying to find ways to help them. And now that I'm physically in the area to where I close enough to where I can, but I do believe in if a if a family is in dire need, and there is somebody in local their area locally that, that can help, yeah. That is capable yeah. of helping in something like this because so, you, yeah. you're not going go i mean you're not going to see if you can take a picture of a ghost right, or right. catch an evp or or get a video of yeah. of an apparition or something i mean you're actually going to you know try to kick something's ass that you yeah. can't see or touch uh, you know at least like get them helped out until we can get there right uh, yeah that's exactly uh -huh. what i mean you'd be helping yeah. us out you can get up there and help yeah. them out so. and when we get there you know, when we do get up, it'll be two or three weeks. I'm hoping sooner. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely contact you when we get there, and then we'll all get together and, you know, just because we show up, we're not going to boot you off. Right, you know? right. So, yeah, so. if uh, anybody knows of anybody that can uh, help this family, it's an emergency. Call me at 774-473-1550, and... Get us the information and we'll get a hold of her and give her the information until you guys can contact each other and see if you can help this family out until we can get up there. Right. So. But it's not fun and games. You no. Know? It's, you know, all of us that have been there, one of see, me, Tracy, Sean, Michelle, Nancy, five of us from, from our team have all had experiences there. And... Yeah. I'm actually, I think, the only one that didn't have any negative experiences, you know, and I was the one that actually talked to my mentor, to my demonologist that I've learned from, uh, that was supposed to get the worst end of the deal, and I really didn't, Yeah. you know, so. but who's to say? Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. Um, yep, so Debbie, I, I did tell you we were going to do this broadcast and I'd bring it up. So hopefully so, somebody contacts us that that knows of anybody or that's watching that's from New Britain. Right. So. Right. Or anywhere. I mean, yeah. New England's not that big. You right. Know? Right. Close I, by. Close to know, New Britain. God, I know so yeah. many top-notch paranormal investigators in New England. I mean, some of the best in the world. But I don't really know how to call them up and contact them. I could call. I could contact a dozen good people in Florida, but. It would be harder for them to make it than us. Or actually, we're only two hours away from where this lady lives. But I don't own a car. So, you know, we rely on uh, our team member and uh, and yeah. good friend, and Sean. And he's uh, working, working a lot of hours this month. Yeah, he's working a lot of split shifts this month. Mm -hmm. I work I work a full-time job. Tracy works three days a week. Yeah, so. so. But, Debbie, we will get there. Yeah. So, all right, we we're going to talk about personal experiences, too. Yep. All right. What? How do you want to start that at? Uh, you want to go first? Not really. Oh. All right. Um, my first experience was... I don't was, believe in ghosts. <laughs> okay. My first experience was I was 10, and uh, I actually had a near-death experience. I have I had asthma as a child really bad, and once a week I had to go for shots. And I remember being rushed to the ambulance. <laughs> Everything went black. I couldn't. I could hear what the doctors were saying, but I couldn't see anything. But um, it seemed like right after that, I started having a weird, strange things happen. You know, seeing and hearing things that weren't there. And a friend of my mother's had stayed the night one weekend. She was pretty upset. The doctor had just finished telling her that her and her husband couldn't have children. She'd never be able to have children. So she was pretty distraught, and he was a truck driver on the road. And he was a truck driver on the road, and pretty distraught. So she had slept in my bed with me that night. And um, I was laying there in bed, and I happened to wake up. I don't know what woke me up. It was about 3 in the morning. And I looked up, and there was a fetus, uh, just a fetus, a baby fetus. And it was, like, just moving. It was in a bubble, glowing. And it was right up above me, and I kept looking at this. And I'm like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, you know, 10 years old. So I told my mother the next day about what I had seen and everything. And within a couple months, we got good news. Doreen ended up having, uh, finding out she was pregnant. So sometimes I think that was a message telling me that she was going to have have a child that she's always wanted. So, you know. 
So that makes you a medium. No. I don't know. I don't know. That makes you kind of like foreseeing things that are going to happen. Right? But dreams come true as in the medium. I've had dreams that come true, you know, a lot of them, but... Well, what they call those precognitive dreams, right? Right, prophetic, precognitive, yeah. All right, I can't do that. No. You know, uh, really, besides you, nobody I know can do that. I actually had a dream about a freaking Montel Williams episode, and I woke up, and there it was. Crazy, just little things like that. Oh, know? well, that's actually, that's nothing. That's mm -hmm. actually normal stuff. I wake up all the time because the TV stays on all night. Uh -huh. And they start playing like infomercials for weird things. Right. You know, like that, uh, what's that thing? That you lay on and you, you lean back, that, that tilt thing. Oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I've had weird dreams where I've been, uh, things like that involved. Right. You know, you got to do the, the tilt thing to as part of your job right, right, or, right. or you're going on a trip but you're on the tilter thing or well, whatever, this is different. you know but but then but you wake up and all of a sudden there it is on TV yeah. but you're you're dreaming but also your but, consciousness right. well this was different though because <coughs> in, in, in my dream I was dreaming a, a little girl knocked on the door a little Spanish girl cute little thing white skin long black hair just adorable she must have been about two or three and I asked, Where, why are you here? Where's your mommy? And she was crying. My mommy's dead. No, she was crying. And she said her mommy's, her mommy's uh, boyfriend had hurt her. Meaning, you know, I don't want to get into it because it's... My mommy's dead. But her boyfriend, apparently, in my dream, was messing around with a little girl. Oh, uh, okay. And, I, and so I brought her in the bathroom and I, and, and I was, like, talking to her stuff. She was going to the bathroom and she was crying. Oh, it hurt so much. It hurt so much. And then I woke up. Well, I get up and I go in the living room. I turn on the TV right in time for Montel Williams. And it shows a, a Spanish couple arguing over custody of their daughter. And all of a sudden, they go to the green room. And there's the little girl I just dreamt about sitting in the green room. And I'm like, holy crap. Mm. So I'm thinking, okay, they're going to, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, my God. The father, I'm thinking the father should get, get this little girl because in my dream, the mother's boyfriend was hurting her. So they never said anything. So at the end of the show, it ended, and they said, well, we'll keep you updated, you know, we find out. Sorry, we got a lot of people out there. So we said, we keep you updated when we find something out. And then it goes to, comes back and it says, we have an update. It said the apparently the little girl's mother's boyfriend was sexually molesting the daughter, so the father got custody. And I was about, I just about went, oh my God, I dreamt that. Huh. So I'd cut the little girl in half and let them each have a piece. Oh, but that's just, just me. Stop it. Be nice. But uh, you know, I've ha I had a dream when I was a child. These two old ladies were walking on the ocean because we live in at the time I lived in New Bedford, Mass. And they were walking and waiting in the water. Two little old ladies in my dream. And all of a sudden, the next thing I remember was a big boat was pulling their bodies out of the water, and it looked like chicken skin, like raw chicken. It was really nasty. They were all swelled up. So I told my mom about my dream. Two days later on the front page, two elderly women were waiting in the water and they drowned. And, it, and right on the front page, it shows them getting pulled out from the nets of the dream or what I just dreamt two days prior. Did they have chicken skin? I didn't know. I didn't look in the paper. I was just yeah. a kid. But, you know, so stuff like that. So I've always been around it all my Is life. Is that music coming from the living room or upstairs? I don't know. Mm. I give up anymore. Me too. It's all about done. Yeah. Yeah. But no, see, I don't have experiences. Well, Those kind anyway. Right. I mean, you're talking metaphysical, uh, medium stuff. Right. You know, uh, Teresa Capato stuff from Long Island medium type stuff. You know, mm -hmm. or uh, I can't do that though. Sylvia Brown type stuff, or John Edwards type stuff, or I get names. That's a big, no big deal. Mm -hmm. What's names? But you get dreams. Well, yeah. Well, like that time we were at um, Boots and Bottles, and I started talking to that lady, and all of a sudden I said, "Who?" I said, "Who's Randy?" She goes, "That's my husband that just passed away last yeah. year." Oh my so, God! If you ever want a good time, and you were in Jacksonville, Florida, go up to Oceanside to the north end of Jacksonville and hit this little saloon called Boots and Bottles. Oh my God! They do great karaoke. They have great live bands. 
cheap prices. They got pool table, dart boards. That's a good place. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I honestly, I've probably seen one ghost in my life. I've never done anything that's like where my mind sees something that's not there, or right. you know, get information names or anything like that. Uh, I remember the only ghost I've probably ever seen was where I owned my restaurant, the golf course that my restaurant was on. I was talking to the, the golf course owner's wife who was standing outside the pro shop, which overlooked my restaurant. And she was like, Joe, she said, you better get in there. You got a customer sitting in there. And I looked over and there was a lady wearing, she was dressed in pink, you know, and uh, I was probably uh, 100 feet away from the place or whatever. And I said, okay, you know, I'll be back. We'll catch up on this later or whatnot. Let me go take care of this lady. I'm walking over there, not paying attention. I open the door up to go inside to say, can I help you, ma'am? There was nobody in there. So I had a set of French doors that went back to the storage area. And I went through them because at the very end of the hallway was a bathroom. I walked all the way down. Men's room doors open. Women's room doors open. There's nobody in there. There's, that's the only way in, the only way out. Was through, is through my front door. But I had also heard the stories because I had golfed at this place for shit, probably 10 years. You know, it was, my, it was where I golfed. That's how I got the restaurant. The guy that owned it, it was a friend of mine, he was like, dude, man, he says, you know, I got all this restaurant space and banquet room space and stuff. I'd love to lease it to you so you can have your own business. But I had heard the stories that long before it was a, uh, a country club, it was a hotel. There was a hotel on the property. And back in the late 70s, I, probably, uh, there was a robbery there and a family was murdered. It was a wife, a husband, and, and their kid. So, <coughs> and all the employees over the years that I, had, that I had played golf there and hung out there and whatnot, always would be like so afraid to go downstairs to where my area was, just because they felt that there was a presence there. And lo and behold, that's where I picked Christian up, you know, mm -hmm. the little spirit boy, seven-year-old little boy picked up. His name was Christian. We come to find out. It took years to, to get it, to get all of this. But yeah, and he'd show up in pictures with, with my kids and he'd do interaction and stuff. But, but besides that, I've never seen a ghost, except uh -huh. the ones we've caught on film. Summer said I've caught that bottom half of that spirit. It looked like a teenage boy with the khaki right. pants and the... And the and the sneakers, but... But damn, I've caught a lot of crap on film though, haven't I? Yeah. And EVPs. We got EVPs like crazy. You know, I, I could probably go sit in Walmart's parking lot, turn on a voice recorder, and get people to talk to us. But it's because of you. Because you're a medium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember um, 20 years ago, me and my kids' ex dad, my ex-husband, we uh, owned a turquoise business up in the mountains, and the, uh, Jeff Lombardo was the man that used to own it, and he was killed up at the mine. Uh, one of his caterpillars rolled over the top of him, he got pinned, and he died up there. Well, we, we bought the business. Well, his girlfriend had this, I don't know if you remember those lamps that have the gooseneck that bend, yeah. you know, and it, had the, and it had the goose head. She had said, you want that lamp? I'm not taking it, because she was moving her stuff out as we were moving our stuff in. I said, sure, I'll take it. You know, I left it in the closet. Never messed with it. And I went ahead and one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to take it out. So I put it on the dresser and I'm laying in bed now. Jeff Lombardi used to always wear black and white or black and red plaid shirts. He loved them. He must have owned like six or seven of them. That's all he ever wore. I'm laying in bed and all of a sudden I wake up around three, three or so. I don't know, three o'clock is so like a lucky, lucky number for me. And I happen to look up and I'm trying to focus and I see the back of a man in a black and red shirt. And he's looking at this gooseneck lamp and he's going like this, looking at it. And I'm trying to, I'm hitting the kids' dad, you know, wake up, wake up. And uh, couldn't get him to wake up, but then I look back up, he was gone, you know. But, huh. you know. That reminds me, uh, we got to get with Kevin. Oh, yeah. So we can go to that restaurant, me and Ed's, and... Yeah. Uh, See the uh, fish stick. He comes yeah. in every day but Friday. Yeah. I call him a fish stick man. Yeah. Apparently there's stories over the years about a, an old fisherman seen in the basement of this restaurant dressed in the, the garb like uh, the, uh, the fish stick commercial. 
uh, what's that? Uh, Gordon, the Gordon, Gordon fisherman. fisherman. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he actually uh, witnessed it one day. So I'd like to get up there and check that out. I actually worked at a couple of bars too that were uh, were haunted. Uh, one of them was the Nomad that burned down in Boardman, Oregon, called the Nomad. Uh, it burned down. I don't know if the owner Rich rebuilt on it or not, but. I remember one time we had so much stuff going on in there. Um, one time I was uh, walked into the bar, and when you look straight ahead, you just see the back of the bartender where the ice machine is because she's filling glasses. And I saw Vicky there. Vicky always wore black, had long red hair. And I said, "Hey, Vicky," I said, I "Was asking, do you, uh, they need some beer batter, beer for the kitchen for beer batter fish?" No answer. And I'm waiting. She's like ignoring me. I'm like, "What the heck?" You know. Then I hear the women's door open and I turn over and look and here comes Vicky. I'm like, what the hell? And I turn back and look and the woman is gone. Uh, another time, I kicked everybody out. It's 2.30 in the morning. I'm getting ready to leave and I see a man in the distance sitting in a chair and I go, sir, it's time to leave. We've been closed, you know. And I get stepped down to go over there. He's gone. Um, another time we were there, it was just the girl was closing up the restaurant. I was closing the bar. It was just us two in there that night. She comes in, she goes, Tracy, she goes, did you see a pregnant woman, really white skin, all in black? And I said, no, I didn't. She goes, she didn't come through here. I said, no. She goes, because I was sitting in the kitchen area. I watched her come in the front door, and she went towards this way. And I said, no, she's not. she never came in here. We checked all the bathrooms. The only way she could have left, we would have seen her leave because she would have had to pass right by us. So things like that, you know, I just love it. I love it. That reminds me of the strip joint that I used to run down on uh, Merritt Island, Florida. It used to be a gas station before it was a bar. And there was always stories over the years. I had always heard it was a famous urban legend of the town. Is that Rocky? Of the town that a girl was raped and stabbed on uh, it's, uh, State Road 3. No, State Road 520 and she made it to the gas station made it inside and and died before the paramedics or whatnot could get there and they always said that the building was haunted but actually at this point this was the late 90s i wasn't i wasn't into ghost hunting at the time i was more concerned with my work and uh golfing and, and things like that fishing a lot and, and stuff and really wasn't doing the whole ghost hunting thing but the the report of the haunting in that place was a like I guess you'd call it an orb activity or a light anomaly activity, mm -hmm. but it was we had on one whole side of the bar was a full length mirror that ran the whole place, and if you would sit at the bar, from time to time you would see purple streaks just shoot through the shoot through the mirror. And I did see those a couple of times, mm. but w there was so we had so much neon light in that place. Mm. I mean, that place probably had eighty neon signs in it. So and, you know, you turn your head real quick or something, and you're looking at a, a at a neon light with purple in it. And right. trust me, there was a lot of them with purple in it. And you turn your head real quick, it, you know, is that just you know, yeah, a uh, uh, a. A normal thing, you right, know, just right from the colors of the lights, right? You know. So, right. but and yeah. I and I spent many hours. <coughs> I mean, we'd close at two a.m. There were times I wouldn't get out get out of there until five o'clock in the morning, you know. And I'm there all by myself, but I really never, I never experienced anything in there. Hmm. Oh, one time nothing uh, paranormal. You know. anyway. <laughs> one time at the Nomad, we didn't open the bar till eleven, and the manager they had the TVs or whatever so they could watch the bar and he was in there early in the morning about 8.30 and he's sitting in the office looking at the monitors and he sees a man with a uh, handlebar mustache kind of like sitting in one of the tables and he's like what the hell how do you get in there you know so he was going to go in there to tell the guy you can't be in here we don't, we don't open till 11. He goes around oh door is still got the padlock on it. There's no way anybody could have gone in there. <coughs> he goes inside, the guy wasn't even there, but he caught it on circuit TV, so they kept mm -hmm. it. You know, that's pretty cool. But you know, when it comes down to it, I probably do have one of the best paranormal experiences of all time. Yep. Which is why I'm probably the greatest paranormal investigator of all times. You're talking about the one with the video. Yeah, yeah. I just wish I had access to that video. Yeah. I wish it was mine. 
it'll probably never see the light of day again. Probably. But Palm Bay, Florida, uh, 2000 and something, you know, six, seven years ago, I'm at this house. Went to this house two or three times, right? Claims of all, all kinds of claims of crap you'd see on these stupid shows on TV, like on my ghost story or, or, or something, you know, with the windows busting open and the light bulbs exploding and the doors flying off yeah. the hinges. It was actually one of those events. <coughs> Not quite as dramatic as that, but we go there the first time, me and my, my buddy are looking at each other like, why are we even here, you know? Nothing's really going on, you know? Caught a couple EVPs, you know, maybe there's a ghost. No big deal. We go back to back the next time. Dude, I watched this guy about six foot three get picked two feet up off the floor, thrown through this filing cabinet that was in this bedroom, you know? And we had a DVR hooked up. We just froze. Okay. Uh, a D, we had a DVR hooked up with four cameras. The instant he got picked up, well, before he got picked up, actually one of my dowsing rods, the one in my right hand, lifted up, spun around, and started jabbing me right here, you know? And so I dropped, I was getting ready to drop those, but this all happened like that fast. I mean, like, that fast. It's got a lag on it. But this kid, this guy, picked up at least a foot off the floor. Why are we freezing? Mm -hmm. Thrown to this cabinet, knocks it over, he's on the floor. Sounded like the house exploded. We go back, Craig and... Uh, a vast virus database has been updated. Ah, uh, that's why it was updated. Uh, was out on the carport with uh, this girl's grandmother, watching, watching us as we're doing our thing. Well, two doors just fly open at the same time. The grandmother gets thrown out of her chair on the carport. This guy gets picked up and thrown. And all of a sudden, yeah, Hey guys, you got an extra lighter I can use? I think can't find one nowhere. Um, yeah. you guys already ate? Yeah. Yeah, right, I took well, a When I come back, I'm going to cook. It's going to be a couple hours, so if you guys are still hungry, okay. I'm making linguine with a, a meat sauce. Oh, all okay. right. And uh, garlic bread, Parmesan garlic bread. Yeah. And something else. Hey, everybody, say hi to Todd. Yeah, we're doing Wally's a show. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing I a am? show. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're, we're doing, doing a show. At it's called the Paranormal, New Bedford Paranormal Show. It's oh, Todd, shit. my brother in law. Hey. <laughs> this is Tracy's brother, my brother in law. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be alone. This is my good looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. Where was I at? The guy got picked up and thrown against a uh, right. uh, metal cabinet. Yeah. But yeah, oh, and the girl at the house, the whole premise of this, of this, uh, of the story is, is the girl, 16 year old girl in the house was having nightmares and dreams and becoming possessed as, as somebody else. Well, what it all boils down to is a family that lived there before, the father was molesting the daughter, who was a teenage daughter. He killed him. Well, kill her, his wife, and himself. And the girl was being possessed by the spirit of this girl. But apparently, the reason the father was doing this was because he was under demonic control. Mm. And the second all that happened, that little girl turned around and looked at me with eyes this big, as black as coal, with a real funny looking mouth, like an 80 year old woman with no teeth or something, you know, I'm all shriveled up and shrunken in. And she just glared at me like, dude, it was not human. It was, it was the most fucked up thing I had ever dealt with or seen in my life. And it actually scared, it actually scared me. And it was to the point when I got home that night, I messaged you because uh, yeah. we were we caught, we were we had those uh, Ning sites, right? And everything. And I think you were running one of mine or something or whatnot. And I was like, you know what? This this stuff just doesn't happen. This stuff isn't real. I've been chasing ghosts for at that point probably twenty years, and this kind of crap just don't happen. And I was gonna quit. Yeah, and, and, I talked and you out of you it. You talked me out of quitting. Yeah. Yeah. So.
Yeah. Anyway, it all on, it's all on film, and yeah. she was showing it at conferences every so often. So yeah, yeah, we'd take it and we'd go travel around different conventions and stuff and show it, and I'd speak about the experience, and and she would speak about the experience, and I'm not going to say her name because, actually, uh, after that event, it kind of changed her life too. Instead of delving deeper into this. Uh, she dove a lot deeper into Christianity, and yeah. she actually became a minister. Yeah, and a uh, real nice lady. Changed and her. Yeah, yeah, it did. It 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 changed all of us, yeah. you know. And this thing, like we were talking about earlier, up in uh, New Britain, Connecticut, uh, it it could be one of those kind of things, you know. You think you're just going to somebody's house because they think they got a ghost, you know. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, you go to somebody's house because they think they got a ghost. There, people aren't stupid. You know, they think it might be their mother or their father or their grandmother or their grandfather right. or a child that has passed away or something. They just want confirmation that a spirit is there. Yeah. And they're not afraid. They don't they don't want it gone. They just want to know who it is and, and what and nine times out of ten, that's what it turns up being. You know? Yeah. But I'm telling you what, when something like that happens, when you actually doors you know about to bust off the hinges two of them at the same time uh, a woman outside of the house is thrown out of her chair you know a, a guy six foot two picked up and thrown through a, a filing cabinet full of books the house sounded like it exploded you know and this all happened in less than a second good times <laughs> <laughs> happened to me once. So that's I, I'm, due, I'm due for one of them. It happened to me once, but what happened was the doors blew open and I got thrown back. It's because I, I it was a broken gas line on my new stove that I was trying mm -hmm. to work on and it kind of blew me backwards. Yeah, did you send your eyebrows? <laughs> no, I got lucky. Uh, no fire. It was just wind. Uh, uh, boom. You know. But, yeah. you know. That was fun. Oh, and the roaches. Oh, my God. This, it's not like this was a nasty family, right? I mean, this was your regular, everyday American, you know, family. You know, uh, they had jobs and they did things and they had a life. And they lived in a nice part of Florida, you know. But there, there, there wasn't a, a, a part of this house that you could walk in where you weren't going crunch, crunch, crunch. I mean, and that's part of uh, demonic activity is uh, insect infestations. Yeah. Well, it can be. It's not a... Uh, it's not a requirement if they have a demon, but uh, you know, this house in Connecticut doesn't have any bugs. It's got a pool table and a dartboard. I know EMF pumps and stuff <coughs> actually attract them. We did, and there was up at the brothel in Fernandina Beach, Florida. Yeah. Those uh, EM pumps me and Mike made uh, down in the uh, kitchen area. I think it was the green one. Yeah, make them out of pencil boxes. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. We put that down, we come back a couple hours later. Roaches dude, all around roaches it. Roaches all around it. What was the name of that bar next door to that brothel? Wicked Davies. Wicked Davies. What's to say your computer or your internet connection cannot handle your current quality of get setting? Please try reducing your resolution and or quality for smoother streaming. I don't know what that means. Uh, we might we might we might be getting lost here. Some weird message popped up. Hmm. But, oh, Wicked Davies, you talk about experiences, right? A friend of mine, Jeff, that owns a group in uh, Amelia Island, uh, Florida, used to, he knows a guy that owns his bar. It's not open, it's closed up. But he also owns a house next door to it that used to be a brothel. And we used to investigate both of them all the time. Well, there's reports that there's a spirit in this bar that don't like women, and he'll abuse women. So me and Jeff and a few other people were in there provoking this thing, calling it out, you know, trying to get it to do something to us. And what'd you do? All I said was, oh, come on, you pussy. And I got punched in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Her lip was busted and swollen up. And you guys are saying oh. worse things than I was. <laughs> good times. Oh, what happened man. to those good times? I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then at the house next door, you got your head scratched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so if anybody's had any experiences they want to share, come in the chat, type it in. And it's probably, it's, it, it's hard trying to type in a whole story. Yeah. But, 
I just wish that we could pull in like guests and stuff like Blogster. I know, I miss Blogster. We used to have yeah. the best broadcasting site. This guy Andy in California owned it. It was Ocean. It was Operators 11 at first, and yeah. then he went to Blogster. And I could actually, on my, I, well, we both had our own different shows on it, plus we had our combined show. Yeah. But I could, I could put 10 people could come in, and I'd put them in the studio, and then I'd just click and drag. If I clicked on your picture and dragged you over to like where you're seeing us at, you would be uh, you'd be live. And you could talk. And you could, could all talk. talk. You, you could bring ten people in. Oh, we used to do so. And you had a video library. I used to play my Alice Cooper videos and funny commercials yeah. and you know uh, uh, dogs humping cats. I mean, I mean all kinds of good stuff. Those were the days. Those were the days. I've even typed in uh, sites like Blogstar, could never find nothing. A lot of good people too. We're still in touch with. We're still in touch with. I gave Todd my letter. We're still in touch with a lot of those people. That's actually how how I met my uh, demonology mentor. Was through that because me and the the guy that owned the team that we went to that demonic case with. Uh, he actually got some real good video from uh, Casadega Spirit Spirit Camp, Spiritualist Camp in Casadega, Florida, and from the Titusville Playhouse. And uh, uh, Radio Rod uh, somehow got wind of it and seen it, so he invited us to come on and do that. And that's when I met Rod. And, yeah. yeah, he's been my mentor ever since. But and God, that's probably going back. Blog star memories. Papa Dave. Hey, Papa hey, Dave. Hey, Papa Dave. <laughs> nice to see you. Actually, uh, Papa Dave is who's in the chat room now. He's from he's from Blog Star. Yeah. So uh, I got a message from uh, Debbie, Dave. So I think we're gonna be coming up real soon. Yeah. So. But, yeah. Yep. I mean, even if we have to cancel the dinner again. For we, the could. we could go up actually the 30th. yeah the 23rd i think we're supposed to go up towards boston and do a reveal at a uh, grand army of the republic facility on some stuff we did there and then the following weekend we have to go to some clients invite us to a past, uh, italian dinner to an italian dinner but I'm thinking with what uh, Debbie messaged me, I got to talk to Sean and Nancy yeah. and I'm, put them off and I'd like to really go up this weekend. So I don't know if she filled you in on what happened. Oh, this weekend it would be, the, you mean next weekend? Well, I get paid this Friday. Yeah, but this weekend is Rockland. You don't want to blow Rockland off again? Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. So... Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're. So he's filled in. He knows. Oh, okay. Things have been oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah they, she. She said they had to leave the house last night, and I feel bad because I'm just. I got off work at four. I came home and me and Tracy went out to dinner, and then we came home and I hadn't checked my messages all day. And she sent me that message at like one thirty this afternoon, and I just got back to her a half hour ago. But. I don't know. So I'm going to Google up some teams in you guys' area and see who I can talk to and see who's got the experience and who can maybe get over there. And, you know, somebody. Yeah. So, some, yeah, at yeah. least until we can get up there, yeah. you know. So. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, glad Papa Dave's in yeah. here. It's been bad, he said. Yeah. If one more person from Blockstar comes in. We can call it a blog star reunion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how you been doing, Dave? You been doing all right? Sean said there's a 25 second delay on the chat for some reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And supposedly you can only post five messages. It's been building up. Well. It's been building up. I don't know. We're, we'll never give up on it. No. I mean, no matter what it takes. If it takes the rest of our lifetimes, and as long as they're living in that house and having the problems, you know, we'll always go back. Yeah. You know, I really don't know the answer. You know, I mean, can somebody 
actually go in and get rid of it. You know, Rod had told me what to do, gave me the answers, told me how the outcome would be, and now he is a medium. Yeah. You know, he's and he's schooled in this stuff. But is it really physically possible? No idea. Yeah. But hey, I'll keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll keep going. Yeah, we just get somebody in there to do a, a blessing on the house so we can get there. You mm. know? If somebody could just go up and throw some holy water around yeah. or burn some sage or something, I mean anything. Get it calmed just, down. Just so the being knows that it's not in control right. and not taking over, that, yeah. that the homeowners do have enough power in themselves to say, hey, dude, guess what? You know, I'm working on you. I'm working on getting you out of here. So, you know, watch your back. And then we get back up there. I'll just, you know, mm -hmm. load my pockets full of silver and take that Vatican holy water and go to town. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, just hopefully we can get somebody out there to cleanse the house and, you know, get it calmed down enough to hold it off until right. we get there. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, and Rod said he's willing to come up and do yeah. it. The only problem is, is we got to get him up here to do it. Yeah, I think so too, Papa. What are you saying? Because of all those spirits that were there. Oh, yeah. There, there yeah. is a portal in there. Yeah. You know, which brings up another topic. You yeah. know, I've, how can you, a portal is nothing you can see or feel. Yeah. So how do you really know it exists? But then you go to places that have hundreds of spirits you know and you know that for a fact when i was there i had to leave the house because i was so upset because there was like 60 of them begging me to not make them go because right. you knew you were doing the blessing right. and I, I had you know so that's why after you did the blessing we tried to see if they could communicate right. and they were still there yeah well i don't see the need to make spirits leave there's they didn't reason. know that though they you were know, scared there's a reason is there a porthole or is yeah. Debbie because Debbie she's like you you're welcome Papa we're coming as soon as we can get there you know Debbie's like you she's a spirit magnet the spirits are attracted to her. right so I mean I'm, how many <coughs> spirits are around us oh I can you know? imagine and I don't want them to go one by yeah. one we can try to help them which she needs to learn how to do yeah. but it's that one negative bad thing yeah that needs to go yeah. you know and hey we'll, we'll do what we can you know yeah. and dave i gotta tell you that was the day you walked in that house and i actually met you was like one of the biggest honors of uh of of my time to actually get to meet you you know it'd be the same as, as like when i got to finally meet radio rod you know uh and mike and, allen and mike yeah. allen when he mike 53 when he came to visit us uh, when I met uh, Linda Peacock for the first time, yeah, it was, you, know? you know, it's great, you know. So. You know, it's because uh, wow, we had that was a few years of, you know, some some nice people that it didn't matter who was doing the show. I would I would be there for, it, yeah. you know, if I was doing a show, they would be there for it. Yeah, and if you couldn't be, then then watch it and then comment on it. And yeah, it was like a big family. It's a big yeah, family. it was. Yeah. That's why I, I can't let this case go because there's family. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was great to meet yeah. you and Tracy too. But uh, I'll be uh, probably when we're done doing this, I'll check my messages. Debbie's probably gotten back to me, yeah. and I'm sure I'll be up for a while. So maybe I'll give her a call. But yeah, later. Papa, just let her know that that. Um, we're going to try to find somebody to go and at least calm it down so we can get there. We're going to try to get there as fast as we can, you know. So, But with Joe, Joe's new job now, he's working six days a week and then I'm working. And you'd have to take a Saturday off. Yeah, well, that's fine. Larry will do that. You know? I'm, uh, I work at a, uh, at a, a senior citizen uh, assisted living facility. And I was actually working part time there as a cook. But they uh, made me uh, the assistant maintenance director, so I'm I'm there all the time now. Yeah. It's it's full time and then some. But uh, the maintenance director, he knows what me and Tracy do, and he's like he doesn't have a problem. You know, I'm on call every weekend. I'm on call, but he said if you got to go away, 
out of town to do something or whatever. He said, don't worry about it. He said, take your weekend. When you come back, you know, take a Monday or a Tuesday off of me for call. Because he's on call five days a week. I'm just the weekend. So, you know, we'll just swap the we'll trade days back and forth. So, All right. the weekend off? He said he'll tell her. Okay. All right. Yeah, so we're going to um, try to Google some people or whatever in your town and see if they can get out there and do something for her until we can get there so see it's too bad all the old timers are too uh, good to do it anymore because mm. right there lorraine warren you know lives in connecticut yeah you know zaphis has already been there and he's not going back because do they watch the women on tuesdays there lots of laughs yeah, I don't know. What's he talking about? Uh, they they watch the women every day, dude. <laughs> what? They they watch them every day, <laughs> and the men. It's kind of scary. Oh, where you work? Yeah. Oh. It, it's kind of scary. Actually, me and my boss Larry, we had to pick a four hundred and fifty pound dude up off the floor today because he slipped off his bed. Oh. Uh. And and we were the only two men on the property at the time. And you sit. You've met me. I'm not a big guy. Larry's not much bigger than I am. It took us a half hour to get this guy picked up, you know, and, and the nurse was standing right there and she was like, you know what, I'm just calling 911, I'm going to have, you know, the paramedics come over and do it. And, but he was like, no, this is embarrassing enough having to have Joe and Larry in here help me. I don't want other people coming in. Let's just do it. I'll try. I'll try to help. I'll try to help. And we finally got him back in the bed. Mm -hmm. but, just joking, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Mm -hmm. I got a couple girlfriends there, Dave. I do. I got a couple ladies that... Uh, cougars. I got, yeah, they're real cougars. 90-year-old cougars. 90-year-old. I got one that's 102. <laughs> and every time I come walking in and she sees me, and she, and her face lights up, she's all smiles. and <laughs> You know, it's kind of nice. It makes me feel good. I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? In a couple of months, I'll probably be chasing you when you're dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> But, oh well, but I don't know. You ready to close yeah, it up? Yeah, wrap this up and yeah. check my messages. I really, I want to get back to Debbie on. Uh, I'm sure she sent me a message. So, all yeah. right, Papa, we're gonna we're gonna close it down. We it's been about an hour. Yeah, it has been a long one. So, so, and we got two other viewers out there. Hey guys, thanks for sticking in with us. Yep, yep. You know, we're yeah. uh, hopefully we'll get better at seniors this are hot. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are. This one is. I'm not a senior. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You're not? No. Uh, you sure have a lot of senior moments. Yeah, I do. That's because I got, well, never mind. Uh. Well, we are going to go now, and thanks, everybody, for coming in. Nice talking to you, Papa. Love you. Uh, hopefully, we'll see yeah, you in a week or two. Yeah, hopefully, we'll see you in a week or two. All right. So, tell, yeah, tell, tell the rest of the family. Tell the rest of the family that we said, hey, you know, hope TJ is doing okay. All right. All right. Over now. Bye, guys. Bye, folks. We'll talk to you later.